Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning or afternoon to you, wherever you're joining us from. We will be getting started in just a minute or two. Um, so if you would like, as you pop on, feel free to add into the chat where you're joining us from um, and what your role is. Are you the owner of your business or a marketer? Um, we'd love to see where everyone is joining us from. And then just because I know this question comes out, comes up a lot throughout the webinar, we are recording today's session. So we will follow up with the recording and the additional resources that we share throughout today's presentation within 48 hours. So you'll see that in your inbox. Um, so I definitely invite you to follow along today, take notes as you'd like, um, but you'll have this resource to look back on um, within 48 hours. Awesome. If you're just joining us, feel free to pop into the chat where you're joining us from um, and what your role is at your business. Seeing a good amount of activity in the chat. So thank you all so much for joining us this morning or afternoon. Looks like we have a good amount of folks on. So I'm going to go ahead and kick us off. Uh -oh. I can get this slide to progress. Um, alrighty, so before we dive in, I just wanted to take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Annie. I work on Nextdoor small business product marketing team. And I have been at Nextdoor for over six years, currently based here in New York City. And we have a very jam-packed, exciting um, presentation for you today. And our goal is that at the end of this, you walk away with an understanding of what is top of mind for neighbors as we head into the holiday season, how you can approach the holidays on next door. And then of course, how to create that compelling um, holiday content that's going to help your business pop. Now we know that a lot of you are joining us and are already on Nextdoor, already have your business page set up, which is awesome. Um, but for anyone who is just getting to know Nextdoor, we are the neighborhood hub for trusted connections in the exchange of helpful information, goods and services. So what exactly does that look like? Well, every day neighbors log on to Nextdoor, whether it's through a computer or through the app, and they see this main feed. And this is really where the conversation happens on Nextdoor, whether it's from neighbors, small business owners, or public agencies. And as you can see, a variety of topics um, take place on the platform, oftentimes having to do with what's going on in the local community or people asking for help or recommendations. So you he see here an example of a, a post from a neighbor asking for a recommendation for where some visitors should stay. Another post from a neighbor asking if she can borrow a crate um, to train her new dog. So tons of different types of topics. And you as a small business owner, if you're creating any type of content, whether it's posts or ads on Nextdoor, they are going to show up in this main feed. So it's what gets the most eyeballs, it's um, the most visible part of the platform. So I know we are hosting a holiday webinar in the middle of September, and you may be surprised by um, this timing, but in fact, this was driven by some 2022 macro shopping trends. And the reason we wanted to get ahead of the game and help you all get ahead of the game, because consumers are starting to plan for the holidays. They're shopping earlier than ever this year, um, in large part due to supply chain concerns. We are also seeing that retailers and service providers are continuing to be that key source of shopping inspiration um, or inspiration for things you need to get done around your home as we head into the fall and the, in the winter seasons. And paired with your use of social media, you really do have an influence on people's buying decisions. And then finally, nearly 90% of consumers expect inflation to impact their holiday shopping one way or another. They will 
be keeping an eye out for any discounts or deals that will allow them to stretch that holiday budget a little bit further. And we know that this is also a topic that many of you are keeping top of mind. Um, back in August, we actually hosted two webinars focused on inflation and how to recession-proof your business, um, partnering with SBA. So a teammate of mine is actually going to share links to those webinars in case you miss them and are interested um, in exploring how um, to approach inflation and recession as a small business. So on next door, our neighbors are truly the ultimate holiday planners and shoppers. And we see the conversation really start early. Um, as early as the beginning of October, we see a 3X increase in holiday conversations. So anything to do with shopping, gifts, decorations, services that you need to get done on your home to prepare for the fall or winter season. We also know that 71% of our neighbors are more likely to try new products and services. So they will be kind of perking up and paying attention to what's new in the neighborhood, new businesses popping up or businesses that have been here for a while offering new things for the holidays. And then finally, 72% of our neighbors, the audience that you're going to be reaching on next door, prioritize supporting small businesses. And I really wanna emphasize this last point because I think it is what makes Nextdoor unique compared to other platforms you may be using to promote your business for the holidays. Our audience on Nextdoor, they're coming here because they wanna connect with their local community. And they truly do understand the impact that small businesses have on their sense of place and the pride of where they live. So they truly do make it um, a point to support small businesses. We expect them to do so more than ever before this holiday season. Um, and it's a big topic of conversation every day on the platform. People coming to champion their small businesses or asking for recommendations um, for who to work with or who to support. All right, so we are ready to kind of get into the meat of today's webinar, which is how you should approach the holidays on Nextdoor. And we wanted to start off with a graph with some data from last year's holiday season, which showed this increase in conversations starting as early as October, and then of course, continuing on up through December. Now, Again, this is last year's data. We actually anticipate that this graph may shift even more um, earlier as people are starting to plan already for the holidays. And what we wanna emphasize is that there's really these three main phases of neighbors' holiday journey, um, their buying journey. And it starts in October with this awareness phase. So in October, neighbors are starting their planning for the holiday season. They're starting to kind of perk up and pay attention to what small businesses have to offer for the holiday season. And then as they head into kind of early November, they enter this consideration phase. And this is when they become a lot more serious and a lot more intentional about narrowing down which businesses they plan to shop with or work with during the holiday season. And then finally, towards the end of November, and then early December, this is when they are ready to buy, they're ready to book those appointments. So this is the decision phase. And so what we have for you in today's webinar is how we would recommend you approach Holiday On Next Door um, because of these three phases that neighbors are going to be in. And we have a suite of tools for you to use to get your business name out in front of neighbors. So first and foremost, um, if you are already on the platform, you know this, but if you are new to Nextdoor, joining Nextdoor as a business really starts with creating a free business page. This is how you're going to get access um, to being able to post and being able to create ads that represent your business. And with a business page, it gives you this online presence within this kind of digital community that we've created here on Nextdoor. As soon as you claim your page and get it all set up, it's gonna make you instantly discoverable to any neighbors who are searching for businesses like yours and overall just help you build that brand awareness. 
every time that you post or you create an ad, as you can see at the top, your business name shows up with that logo and neighbors can click that to navigate over to your business page where then they can learn all about you, see what your hours are, how to get in touch with you. So super imperative that you take time to set up this business page. And then next we have business posts. So posts are free and unlimited to businesses that are verified on our platform. I'm not gonna dive too far into our verification process, but a teammate of mine is going to share a link in the chat. If you're not yet verified or you don't have access to free business posts, likely because you just need to take a few steps for us to verify your business. So check out that article. But as I mentioned, business posts are really this, the best way for you to share these frequent updates because they are unlimited. Um, and they're a great way to engage with your nearby neighbors. So when you share a post that goes into that main newsfeed and the neighbors can react to it, they can reply to it, you can reply back to them. So it gives you that opportunity to have that kind of conversation with your nearby neighbors. And then finally, we have Nextdoor ads. Now ads are a paid product on Nextdoor and they are going to give you priority placement in that newsfeed. They are also going to boost you in search results. And ultimately they just offer you the broadest reach. So business posts are going to go to your immediate neighborhood, the people um, closest to your business. Whereas with Nextdoor ads, you can target specific zip codes or by radius to reach beyond that immediate neighborhood. So it is going to offer you the broadest reach. So as I walk you through the plan of how to approach holiday kind of month by month, keep in mind these three solutions, and we are going to be encouraging you to really use all of them to get your business name out in front of neighbors. So what should our plan look like in October? Remember, this is when neighbors are in that awareness phase. So they're starting to kind of perk up and pay attention, starting to loosely put together their plans for the holiday season. So your job during October is really just to get your business out in front of neighbors. And you can use both posts and ads to do this. Some ideas for what you can include in your content. First off, if you are newer to Nextdoor or you've never posted before, um, definitely recommend that you just share like a hey to the neighborhood post. Um, let, them know, let them know who you are, um, where you're located, what you have to offer. You can include any details, like if you're a family-owned business or how long you've been serving the neighborhood. We also encourage you to use October to build up those recommendations from past happy customers. Um, this is a great way just to build that word of mouth network. And we see that recommendations are super powerful on Nextdoor. It's oftentimes what brings people to Nextdoor when they're considering a certain business. They want to see what neighbors think about that business because they trust the viewpoint of someone who lives locally. Um, so definitely encourage you to take time to ask people for those recommendations. They'll be highlighted on your business page and also shared into the news feed. So it's also just a great, a great way to generate more business. And then finally, you can start sharing some of those seasonal updates of what you're going to have going on uh, during the, the holiday season. Um, just a reminder, business pages and posts are both free. Um, and posts are unlimited. So it's a great way to kind of get out there early and often and start kind of that drumbeat. All right, as we head into early November, this is when neighbors are entering this consideration phase. So they're getting a lot more serious and intentional about narrowing down to which businesses they want to shop with or work with. Um, so your job in November is to help uh, neighbors understand what makes you stand out and why they should choose you. So some ideas for what you can include in your content for both posts and ads. First off, you can be that point of inspiration. So we encourage you to share gift guides or seasonal services. Oftentimes, if you're in a home, in, um, if you're a home service provider, we see people post like before and after images of their work. Um, if you're a restaurant, you could post a holiday menu or maybe use a business post to ask people what they would like to see on your holiday menu. Um, and you can promote any upcoming events as well. 
This is also a great time to spotlight any of those recommendations um, because truly there's nothing better than the words of a happy customer. Um, it's kind of that moment of show rather than tell. So if you have um, some positive recommendations, you can take a snippet of that and add it into your business post or into an ad. And then finally, this is an opportunity to show off your expertise by answering any common questions. Um, this is where you can really show your usefulness um, and help people understand how your business can help them through the holiday season, whether it's with items that they can purchase for gifts or if you're a service provider and you can help them prepare for um, the change of seasons. As a reminder, business posts are gonna allow you to reach your immediate neighborhood and then next door ads offer that broader reach to specific zip codes or radius that you're interested in targeting. All right, and then our, um, our final month, as we enter into December, this is when neighbors are ready to purchase. So this is when you wanna really lean in um, to drive that action with ads and business posts. Some ideas for content um, in December. If you are a business that offers any type of discounts, uh, we really encourage you to spotlight those um, through an ad. It's a great way, especially if it's a limited time discount, it's a, a great way to kind of create that urgency um, and it gets people in the door to your website right away because they don't want to miss out on whatever discount you're offering. This is also a great time to recommend any of your best selling items or um, seasonal services, especially if those things are kind of flying off the shelf or if you're booking up really quickly. Again, it's a way to kind of create that urgency. And then finally, I think one thing that um, businesses don't always think about, that's actually a great idea to promote um, during the holiday season is if you offer gift cards. Um, gift cards are super easy to buy, especially if it's a last minute gift or if it's for someone that you don't know super well. So if you are a business that offers gift cards, definitely let people know. It's kind of a different side of your business that maybe people don't think about all the time, but it could be a really great gift idea. And um, just some data that we wanted to share with you, 43% of neighbors are going to be looking out for those holiday discount codes or coupons. So again, if you have anything to offer, um, definitely highlight that in the month of December. Okay, so now you kind of see our recommendation for how to approach holiday um, in this month by month, matching your messaging by where neighbors are in their buying journey. And we also know that as small business owners or employees, you are all super busy, especially during the holiday season. So we want to try to make this as easy as possible for you. So we have created a month by month guide that you can access for free at nextdoor.com slash SMB holiday calendar. A teammate of mine will share that direct link in the chat. And we have broken down each month with su suggestions of when and what to post. Um, so our recommendation to you now, it's, what is it? September 20th. In the next few days, as we approach this first, first month of October, we encourage you to take maybe 15, 30 minutes to sit down and think through what your strategy is going to be, what you can say about your business in each month if you want to just start with October, that's totally fine. Um, but just take a moment. You can print out blank calendars um, just with a quick Google search and note in there when and what you want to post. And it will just help you kind of get ahead of the holiday rush so you don't have to think about it when you're in your super busy time. It's already thought through and you just need to execute it. Okay, so... Now that we know how to approach holiday, we want to talk about how to create compelling content on Nextdoor. Um, and one thing I want to note is that on Nextdoor, you are reaching a unique audience. These are people who live near your business. And so it's important to think through um, what type of content is going to resonate most on Nextdoor. Um, and it might be different from what you post on different platforms that you're on. So first off, we just wanted to share um, 
our approach to effective content creation on Nextdoor. And there's really these three kind of guiding principles. First, be neighborly. Second, be local. And third, be useful. So this is really what Nextdoor is all about. These three things really embody the platform because neighbors are coming to the platform as well as small businesses and public agencies to connect with one another and keep up with what's happening in the local area. And oftentimes they're there to support one another as well. Um, you see that utility in some of the examples I showed before where people ask for recommendations or ask to borrow things. As a small business owner, you can be useful too. You can show how your small business can help them through what is oftentimes a very busy season for all of our lives. Um, so definitely tap into these three things, be neighborly, be local, be useful. Now, when it comes to creative best practices, we have narrowed it down to five tips. And these are things that we've collected through the years as we've helped small businesses and, and um, large advertisers have success promoting on Nextdoor. So first and foremost, keep it conversational. Um, Nextdoor is a, you know, a casual platform. It's neighbors coming to connect with one another. So you really can speak as if you're talking to a neighbor or talking to a customer who's walked in the door. Um, you can use casual language. Um, most importantly, we just encourage you to keep it kind and keep it positive. Second, stay close to home. So what we mean by this is the topics of conversation that are popular on Nextdoor have to do oftentimes with home, family, and community. So as you're writing your copy and picking photography, just keep those things in mind so that you resonate best on the platform. More photos, less text. This one I probably can't emphasize enough. Um, we have proven out that lifestyle photography performs best compared to images that are heavily covered in text. Um, I think all of us have probably experienced at one point or another advertising that feels maybe a little spammy, a little pushy. Oftentimes it's with a photo or a flyer that's heavily covered in text. Um, so we really encourage you to try to pick out more lifestyle photography, things that show your products, show your place of work, show the team behind your business, happy or sorry, happy customers, um, whatever it may be, um, and try to avoid any text on photos. Um, kind of similar uh, recommendation here, don't blend in. Um, encourage you to pick bold, colorful photography. Try to avoid images that have white edg edging because you'll kind of um, escape into the background of next door. And then finally, stay focused. And this is really an important tip for ad creation. Um, when you're creating an ad, you want to be really cognizant of what you're trying to achieve with this ad. Are you trying to get more messages? Are you trying to have people... Uh, go to your website? Do you want people to stop in and shop with you in person? Whatever it may be, um, focus in on what you're trying to achieve and make sure that the copy of your ad and that call to action button at the bottom of the ad um, really stick to that theme of what you're looking to achieve. So that when neighbors see your ad in the newsfeed, it's really clear what next action they should be taking. Okay, so in this next portion, we are going to walk through some example posts and ads through each of the um, phases, awareness, consideration, decision. I do just want to say up front that I acknowledge that there are a number of different types of businesses joining us today. Unfortunately, we don't have time to do an, a specific example for every type of um, type of business, but um, it's really the themes behind what I'm going to share that I want you to pay attention to because most everything um, can be applied to your business no matter the type of business that you're in. So we will be walking through a retail ex example and a home services example for each of the phases. So in this first example, Helen's Home Hardware, 
Um, we are in the awareness phase. So your job as a small business in the month of October is just to start getting your business name out there. Let folks know what you have to offer, especially if there's anything new or different that you're going to be offering during the holiday season. So in this first post example, um, the owner lets folks know that they just joined next door. They're excited to be here, um, but they've actually been in the neighborhood for 20 years. They're family run business and ask people to come in, stop in and say hello. They're here to help with any home needs. So it helps people get to know the business on a little more intimate level um, and also lets them know what they have to offer the neighborhood. And then this is paired with an ad where they just really lightly touch and let folks know that they will be around for the holiday season um, and here to support the community. Um, and we'll see what their, their next example is as we head into the consideration phase. Um, Next, I wanted to share our home services example, again, for the awareness phase. And the approach that uh, Green Cleaning Co. takes here with their business post is letting folks know the type of services that they're going to have available during the holidays. So they have a one-time deep clean, a before and after event cleaning, recurring cleaning, custom cleaning. So they kind of let folks know what they're going to be offering. And then this is paired with an ad where, again, they advertise that they're obviously available for the holiday season. They'll be taking um, appointment bookings and they're offering a free estimate. Okay, as we head into the consideration phase, this is when we really want to show what stands you apart from competitors, um, where what people love about your business. You can highlight those positive recommendations. So in this first example, um, remember during consideration phase, this is a good time to inspire. So here, Helen's Home Hardware um, uses a business post to share a gift idea for your DIYers that you may be shopping for for the holidays. And then they pair it with an ad that took a little blurb from a recommendation. And so it's using the words of a happy customer um, with that shop now CTA. And then for our home service example, um, again, Green Cleaning Co. is wanting to show what makes them stand out. And so here they're choosing to use a business post to highlight that they use all eco-friendly um, products when cleaning your home. So that's something that they pride themselves on and they want customers to know makes them stand out. And then they pair it with an ad where they celebrate the fact that they were voted a next door neighborhood favorite winner. Um, so neighbors love them, they're a trusted business. And so it kind of gives them that extra edge of this is why you should hire us for your home cleaning needs because others in the local area love us and voted us a favorite in the neighborhood. And you can see throughout all the examples that I've been sharing that there um, is always a photo included. Um, for business posts, a photo is optional, but it is something that we encourage because it just gives you that kind of extra pop, that flash of color, um, helps kind of catch the eye of people in the newsfeed. So our final set of examples is for the decision phase. Um, and this is when people are ready to buy. So you wanna do everything in your power to kind of create some of that urgency, let folks know what they um, could pick up at your store if they're looking to shop or what services you could cover for them. So in this example of a post from Helen's Home Hardware, um, they say we have an entire section of giftable items. So if you haven't yet started your shopping or uh, need to pick up something quick. We have a variety of things from tools to home decor to holiday items. And then in our ad example, they promote a discount or a limited time sale that they're running. So a uh, BOGO buy one, get one on holiday lights until Saturday. So you can see how that time constraint creates that sense of urgency. Um, and this ad will lead folks to their website um, or they could come shop in store to pick up some holiday lights. 
And then our final example for home services, Green Cleaning Co. Um, uses a post to share an idea for a gift, which is give the gift of a clean house. This is something that probably not a lot of people would think about for a cleaning service, but I actually love the idea of this. If you're going to be going to someone's home for a holiday, give them the gift of a clean home following the party um, by using a e-gift card with Green Cleaning Co. And they say you can buy a specific service or a dollar amount. So this is an opportunity where Green Cleaning Co. is showing a different way that you can use their business and support their business, but in a gift for someone else. And then paired with an ad, another way to create that urgency. Um, here they say, need last minute holiday cleaning, only a few spots left. So it creates that urgency of, oh, I need to book now because their service is booking up quick. And with each example that I just walked through, you can see that at the top, we highlight the business name um, and that logo on both the post and the ad. And this is why it's so important to take time to update your business page. If you recently joined and haven't taken the time to set up your page, it is a super important step because everything that you create is linking back to this business page, but we're also pulling the logo from your business page. So to really put your best foot forward and um, kind of show that professionalism, we really encourage you to add a logo. Um, if you have a little holiday flair, you can add to it, go for it, or you can use the back um, cover photo here to add a little holiday flair. It's just a way to keep the page up, updated and seasonal. Also take time to update those holiday hours if they're going to be changing and confirm your contact details. People are coming to this page to learn about you, but most importantly, they're oftentimes coming here because they wanna get in touch. And so it's really important to have the right contact details so they know um, how to reach you or where to find you. And then finally, another way that you can keep your business page fresh is by rotating out the photos that you show in your photo gallery. And this section of your business page is a great way to show rather than tell what your business has to offer. So you can include photos of your products, of your place of business, of your employees, happy customers. If you're a service provider, we oftentimes see people show those before and after photos of their work. Um, it's just a great way to spotlight kind of, you know, the pride that you have in your business um, and help people understand what you have to offer. So as we head into the holiday season, if there's going to be any different types of services or new products that you're offering, add those photos to the photo gallery of your business page. All right, we have gone through the majority of um, our webinar today, but before we get into q and I just wanted to share some of the resources that we have to support your business on Nextdoor. Ultimately, we just want you to know that we're here to help you. We want to see you thrive. We're on your side. And we have a number of resources that you can access at any time, um, no matter what you're looking for. If it's a product related question, we have a dedicated help center, which will help you understand kind of how to use Nextdoor, both as a business and a neighbor. Um, and it's also where you can get in touch with our dedicated small business support team. So if at any point you need to talk with someone, um, we offer email support and you can get in touch with our team through the help center. My team, the one that's been behind the screen helping me in today's webinar, sharing all these resources in the chat and answering questions in the Q&A, oversee our small business blog. And this is a resource that I encourage you to bookmark and come back to throughout the year. It's where we share news about any new products or features that we're launching. 
We share insights about what's top of mind for neighbors throughout the year. And we have a number of tips for how to grow your business. Um, if you are just learning about Nextdoor um, and haven't yet joined as a business, this is a great resource that will walk you through what our different offerings are that I covered today, like our business pages, posts, ads. And then finally, we just published and launched our holiday guide. I'm super excited about it. You can access it at nextdoor.com slash SMB holiday. If you were to check out one resource after today's webinar, this is the one I would recommend. It has a number of helpful articles um, to help you navigate the holiday season. As I mentioned before, we have that calendar guide for when and what to post throughout October, November, and December, and lots of other great content. So definitely encourage you to take a look there. And then I wanted to share one other tip with you all because of the importance of photography. Um, I know I emphasize that in our creative best practices, but I also know that getting quality photography is not only timely, but it's costly. And so I don't want that to be what holds you back from promoting your business on Nextdoor. So two sites to check out, pexels.com and unsplash.com are both sites that offer free stock photography. So if you don't have photography that um, shows off what your products are or uh, the different services that you offer, check out these sites. Um, from my exploration of them, they cover a variety of different topics um, and a lot of different business verticals. So I would bet you can find something to use. Um, and it's just really beautiful photography that people have taken and are willing to let you use. Um, so I encourage you to check that out. All right, we are pacing perfectly. Um, we have about 10 minutes. Uh, where we're going to dive into Q&A. So at the bottom in the navigation bar, you should see an option um, that says Q&A. I can see already almost 100 questions added here. Um, so unfortunately, we won't have time to get through everything. Um, one thing I'll say at the start is if you have a question that's really specific to your account on Nextdoor, if you're struggling to get access to your account, or maybe you have duplicate pages or you need help getting set up, I definitely encourage you to head to the Help Center and you can get in touch with our support team. These people are highly trained to help you with our product. Um, so they will help you one-on-one -on -one to get you set up properly. Um, so we won't likely be taking any of those questions here in the webinar, just so since they're so specific. Um, but let's go ahead and dive into what we have here. Um, so a question from Fred, can you share step-by-step -step instructions for creating an ad? So we unfortunately don't have time to go too deep into the ad creation process. But luckily, um, I recently did a deep dive webinar on Nextdoor ads. So a teammate of mine is going to share the link to that webinar. Definitely encourage you to check it out. I go pretty um, deep into just how to get set up on Nextdoor and then how to set up an ad going through the specific steps. Um, but what I will touch on today, since I know we have a good amount of people who are just getting familiar with Nextdoor, or even if you've been on the platform, you may not know all of the navigation of the platform. So this is the business experience. When you claim your page on Nextdoor, this is where you're going to land. Or if you happen to have a business page that's linked to your neighbor account, you can toggle over and this is your business view. On the left-hand side here, and this is a um, view if you're using our app, which is available for businesses to take on the go with you, um, you'll see there are five tabs of the experience. The first is that page tab. So this is where you're gonna come to make those updates to your page um, where people land to learn about your business. So if you wanna update that cover photo, add your logo. We know that business pages with logos get four times as many views. Um, if you don't have a professional logo, no worries. Just add a photo of 
yourself or your staff or your storefront products, anything is better than nothing. Um, and then you can update all of that contact information, add those photos to your photo library or photo gallery. Um, next, you will see that we do have a dedicated ads tab. So this is where you're gonna come for anything ads related, whether you're looking to create an ad or you're looking to check up on an ad that you already have running. So when you land on the ads tab, I'm not gonna go through the full flow of creating an ad, but that webinar will cover it. Um, but ultimately what you're going to do here is first build your ad. So you'll add um, a short headline, upload a photo, and then choose that call to action. So do you want people to message you? Do you want them to shop now on your website? You can choose from um, a drop down of CTAs as we refer to them, call to action. Next, you'll choose your target audience. Again, you can do this by choosing specific zip codes that you want to target or by using a radius. Um, and then you're going to pay and publish your ad. Your ad will go through a short review period. Um, this is for us to make sure that you're putting your best foot forward and following the guidelines so that you'll have success on Nextdoor. One of the key things that we look for in that review is too much text on photos. Um, so just keep that in mind that we, we encourage you uh, really try to avoid text on photos in general, um, but less than 30% of the photo should be covered in text. Um, another question that we had gotten from Logan is how do I create a post? So I wanted to cover that right now as well because um, we're, we're looking at the navigation of the platform. So post is gonna be in a separate tab from ads. Um, and when you land on the post tab, if you have already created any posts from your business page, so remember this business experience is different from your neighbor experience. So any post that you created as a neighbor won't show up in this post tab, but any post that you created from your business will show up here. And then um, let me just move my little screen here. I wanna make sure you see there is this bright green um, circle with a plus button. This is what you'll tap to create a new post. And you will um, add, the content of your post, so you add a title and the body of your post. Um, you can add a photo, we recommend it, but it's not required. And then you post it and it will show up in that main news feed um, to neighbors in your immediate neighborhood. And then it will also show to you in this um, post tab. So you can go back and see if people have commented on it and you wanna reply to them or if they've um, given it a like or a thank. Um, your business post will also show up on your business page. Okay, um, let's see, a question from Deborah. I, how do I get set up if I have two different businesses? Do I need two different accounts? Um, this is a great question and one that we see often. So um, business pages, uh, if you have two different businesses, we encourage you to create different uh, business pages, but you don't have to create two different accounts. So from one account, you can add up to 10 different pages. Um, and then it will allow you to basically use one login. So one email and password combination to access your account. Once you're logged in, you can easily switch between the different pages. Um, but if you have two entirely different businesses, let's say, you're a lawyer and then you also have a yoga business on the side, um, we would recommend that you create two different pages for that so that they show up in the right context on Nextdoor. If I'm searching for a lawyer, I wanna find that page. If I'm searching for a yoga studio, I wanna find that one. Um, this also holds true if you have multiple locations. So because Nextdoor is local in nature, and especially with business posts, uh, you're reaching the neighborhood that your business is located in. Um, we would encourage you to create different pages for those locations, especially if they're um, pretty far from one another, just so that you have the opportunity to use posts to reach those nearby neighbors. And then you can also, of course, use ads to, to reach a broader audience 
Um, but it's important also just from a search perspective, when people are looking for businesses near them, um, that the right business shows up with the right address. All righty, let's see. Um, okay, from Joanne, do you recommend connecting your business account with your personal account or keeping them separate? Um, this is a good question. I'm actually just going to um, click through here. Okay, so there are two different ways to set up as a business on Nextdoor. Uh, the first is by creating a neighbor account and then adding a business page to that account. And the second is by creating a business account. Um, if you don't yet have Nextdoor or you don't have the app, you can quickly use these QR codes um, to get to the app store and download the app. Um, but I'll walk you through both scenarios uh, really quickly here. So the first scenario is adding a business page to an existing neighbor account or maybe a new neighbor account if you've just joined us. So you'll go through the process. If you just go to nextdoor.com or um, download the app, you will first be asked to join your neighborhood as a neighbor. So you'll go ahead and go through that process. Once you have joined, um, you will see your profile photo in the upper uh, left of your screen if you're on the app, upper right if you're on desktop. And if you click that, you will see the option to add a business page. If you do this and go through the flow, I think there's just three steps to create your business page. You'll add your name, the location, and, and your business category. You will then see that your business page is added under your neighbor profile. And the great thing about this is then you only need one login. So every time you come to Nextdoor, you can experience both the neighbor experience and your business experience under one account and just toggle between the two. So if you wanna get over to create a post from your business page, you'll just click this from under your profile and it will take you over to that business experience that I was showing earlier. Now, the alternative, if, if you prefer not to attach a neighbor account with your business account, that's also totally fine. Um, you can create an entirely separate business account um, by visiting nextdoor.com slash business. And you will create your business account. So you will add a different email and password combination for this account. And then you'll add your business name, the location, and the business category. And the only thing that this then requires is if you have a neighbor account as well, you will need to log out and log into the neighbor account if you want to access that rather than being able to kind of easily toggle between the two. Um, ultimately, though, it's up to you. We do recommend, regardless of what you choose, that you join Nextdoor as a neighbor because it's going to be the best way for you to really get a sense of what the platform's all about what your neighbors are talking about. So when you're thinking of content, um, you can kind of tap into the conversations that are already happening on the platform. Um, but whether you do that by tying a business page to that neighbor account or creating two separate neighbor and business accounts, totally your preference. All righty, um, let's see. From Maria, I sell online. How do I advertise my business on Nextdoor? Um, thank you, Maria, for this question because um, it's one that we get a lot of the time um, and I do want to address it. So Nextdoor is a platform for every type of small business, whether you're a brick and mortar or a service provider or a new business starting out of your home um, or one that sells online. And all types of businesses can get set up with a business page. So what you'll do, Maria, if you sell online is um, you will go ahead and create your business, your business page, whether you want to start fresh with a, a business account or add one to your neighbor account. But when you add your address, um, you can mark that as hidden from public view. So we do need an address because Nextdoor is a local platform. We need to understand where you're located, um, but you don't have to show that visibly on your page. So you can hide it from public view. And then 
your posts are going to go to your immediate neighborhood. So it will reach where whatever address you use, if it's your home address, you'll be able to reach the people right around you with business posts. What, but with ads, you can reach that broader audience. You can pick specific zip codes around you to target. Now, keep in mind that Nextdoor is a local platform. So if you are a shop that sells nationwide, Nextdoor is going to be um, a platform that helps you reach your local audience, um, not a nationwide audience at this time, um, but definitely still encourage you to, to use it to reach those people who are around you. And I know that people love to support the businesses that are popping up in their own neighborhoods, whether those are um, brick and mortar or uh, online service. All right, I'm going to take one final question and then we're at time. Um, this one says, why can't I see my posts and ads in my neighborhood? Um, this is a, a great question. It has to do with a few different factors. So first off, if you live in a different neighborhood from your business location, um, you won't be able to see the posts from your business in your own neighborhood since those go to uh, the neighborhood that your business is located in. But for ads, it really comes down to if you're targeting your home neighborhood uh, with your business ad. If you are, there's still a chance that you won't always see your ad in the newsfeed because it's just a matter of timing. Um, it's, it would be really difficult for you to perfectly time when we happen to be displaying your ad. Um, so there's a chance that you'll miss it, but you could see it if you are definitely targeting your home neighborhood with that business ad. All righty. We are at time, a little over time. So appreciative of those who joined us today. I hope today was helpful and that you head into the holiday season with a sense of confidence of how to approach um, promoting your business on Nextdoor. Um, definitely know that we're here to support you. So check out all of those resources that we shared. And then we will be following up with the recording of today's webinar as well as a um, FAQ section addressing some of the Q&A that we didn't get to um, and all of the, the links that we shared today. So keep an eye out for that. It will come within the next 48 hours. Um, and then following the webinar, as soon as you log out, you will see a survey in your browser. Would love any feedback if you can take a minute to share what you thought about today's webinar, um, if it was useful for to you and what we could do better um, going forward with webinars. So thank you all so much. Um, have a great rest of your afternoons at this point, um, and we'll see you again soon.